Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. All right, so we're mixing reviews and unboxings now because I recently found out people don't find my channel by searching things in YouTube. They do it to be entertained because they find it on the home screen as well as from suggested videos on other videos that they're seeing, you know, all on the sidebar right here. So starting with this all off is a guitar that was purchased through my new Guitar Day program. Just as a fun fact, this was actually the very first one the very first guitar that was purchased through this program. And it's something that I probably would have never had purchased myself, but it is a really cool brand new guitar. So that means it's not gonna be a Gibson today. It's not gonna be a Fender, not a Squire. You're gonna have a Schecter. <laughs> if you remember correctly, I, I unboxed a, uh, a Schecter case a while ago. I had quite the number of Schecter guitar fans upset with me about that. But finally, you guys will get to see the really cool Schecter guitar that I get to review. So this guy was purchased from Musician's Friend, and the story behind it is like this was supposed to ship like immediately, but what had happened is the system had an error that said it was available. It was a brand new guitar at the time. So the guy who had purchased this was really excited because it's a gift for someone. And the fact that he was gonna be like one of the first people to get it. I mean, this was all the way back in January. <laughs> so inside this Schecter guitar box from one, two, three camera angles. Now that wasn't very elegant. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see what's in here. I think I've only had one Schecter before this guitar, but nice. It's a purple guitar. And that's why I really wanted to review this because you know, there's something about purple guitars. They just kind of look cool to me. I know my mom really likes the color purple. So I've always been kind of partial to it myself because of that. But the big reveal. Nice. This is one slick looking guitar. You know, despite being, you know, a girlyish purple color, it's a really dark and evil vibe to it. So I don't think it's girly at all. It's got this nice like satin finish. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's just a very thin veneer, but I guess we could be wrong because it does have binding along the edges. Looks like a Floyd Rose special. So that'll be similar to what we saw on that HM Strat. But what really made me interested in this thing was the inlays. They're numbered with Roman numerals. So you got a three, a five, seven, a nine, 12, 15, you know, it just goes straight up and down the neck. And I love the way that it kind of snakes in the middle of the fretboard. That's just kind of interesting, especially as a guy that can't just go, all right, here we go, 15th fret. So if you know your Roman numerals, that's kind of a cool little feature. On top of that, we got these really cool, like semi what metallic EMG purple humbuckers there. Like they have a little bit of sparkle to them. Looks like only a three-way selector switch, so no coil splitting or anything fancy like that. So pretty simple layout here. I'm kind of impressed with this. At first it's a little bit heavy, but I'm digging this whole neck through shape. In my Trade Tuesday series, I had that Ibanez RG something, whatever it was. That was a really cool guitar for the money. And I love that it had that neck through construction. Now this one, it just looks like it is a set neck. So, so not actually neck through like that other one, but you know, kind of gives you that illusion but it's pretty chunky. This is uh, not as lightweight as I thought it was going to be. I was expecting something a little bit lighter than this. I really like the truss rod adjustment right here as well. It kind of reminds me of what Fender did about a year or two ago. People seem to have liked that feature. So it's nice to see that at least other manufacturers have taken them up on that. So let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about Schecter right now, as well as look at some beauty shots of this guy. And then we'll throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Okay, so this is a new 2020 Schecter Banshee GT6 FR model, essentially meaning it's a six string guitar with a Floyd Rose. It's their next installment within the Banshee series, and it refers to a guitar that looks like this, kind of Stratocaster-like, but mixed with demons. <laughs> While it might look like a neck through construction from the front due to the aesthetic printed design, it's what they call a set through neck. It's kind of a blend between a traditional set neck and the neck through construction. All I know is it makes it effortless to play all these notes up and down the neck. There's nothing stopping you from even playing past the 24th fret. 
These guitars offer active electronics with matching colored pickups and satin finishes to appeal to players who need speed. You can choose between a cool red finish, the purple finish, which we're featuring today, a mysterious charcoal burst, and a translucent blue finish. All of these are topped with flame maple veneers to give them a slightly fancier look, and these sell brand new in stores for $999. No case, no gig bag, but you can purchase one. Now that we know a little bit about this model, let's go ahead and take a look at it on the workbench. All right, let's go ahead and check out this Schecter Banshee here. Don't freak out, I'm not gonna stop tearing guitars apart. I just don't wanna touch this Floyd Rowe system because after that HM Strat, it's like, oh man, that was like two hours just to get that thing playable. And straight out of the box, Schecter impresses me. That's how it came, perfectly in tune. And it's set up really well, so I, I don't wanna mess around with that. So they definitely are not messing around when they say it is set up to play by Schecter Guitar Research. But let's go ahead and capture these specs. So as we were talking about earlier, it is a flame maple veneer top. So this is not like a full on top. It's likely just paper thin. Unfortunately, since we're not taking the pickups out of this one, we're not gonna be able to tell quite how thick it is. But to be honest, it looks like we wouldn't have been able to tell anyways, because right in there, you can see it's completely painted over. So it's likely just paper thin. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of movement to this maple top. It's almost like a photo flame, but if you get it in the light just right, this one will move. It's more so the treble side of the body that has a little bit more figuring to it. The pickup set within these guitars are the EMG 60 and 81 set. What's kind of interesting here is one of them has this like really bright EMG logo, whereas this other one, it kind of plays a little bit of peekaboo with you. And then the Floyd Rose special that they're using is actually a Schecter exclusive called the Hot Rod model. I'll be honest, I don't really know the differences between a regular special and that. The only thing that I saw in comparison to that HM Stratocaster is the arm is different. This is kind of a push-in arm that has a little Allen key right there that helps you lock it down into place. And I love the chrome accents on this. So you have it all black, but then your key parts are all chrome, which is really cool. And kind of like what we were talking about earlier, I never realized that that's what they were trying to do until I started looking at other Nectar designs within the Banshee model. But that's one of the things that drew me to this guitar. Guitar. And that all comes from my love of the Spotlight Special model. I love things that have that design. Then as far as our controls here, it is a master volume right there with a three-way selector switch and a volume pot. Now one small quality control type thing that they could have done better is these pots will actually continue to move. So they've either loosened up in shipping, so I'll have to fix that. I mean, you can see it kind of wiggles around because it was loose, or they might not have tightened them strong enough at the factory. So very small thing, but something to know about. While I've got that knob off it's kind of cool what they've done here they've actually recessed the body a little bit kind of prs like in style that way the knob does not catch against the body and it can sit more flush but let's take a quick look at those additional little cutaways right here it's just kind of a comfort feature as well as an aesthetic feature Moving on to the neck, we've got some cool stuff. So besides these sweet reverse Roman numeral inlays, it is a pure ebony fretboard. That thing is looking nice. And the frets on this thing are just gigantic. I mean, just take a look at these things. They're billed as 24 extra jumbo frets. These are super tall. So if that's the way you like them for super bendy stuff and super fast playing, you're definitely gonna like this guitar. It's really hard to tell, but if you look right there, you can actually see this does indeed have black binding. And the radius of the fretboard is 14 inches, so that's going to be pretty comfortable to play as well. As far as neck specs go, our nut width is 1.63 inches, so a little bit slimmer up here than most guitars. And then by the 12th fret, it's back to what other guitars are, around 2.04 inches. I need two hands to do this, so you'll just have to trust me. At the second fret, it's 0.78, so that is a very slim feeling neck there. And by the 12th fret, it's 0.84, so this is definitely a slim shreddery guy neck. It's billed as a slim U shape, but it, it's kind of interesting. It's one of the neck shapes that I don't necessarily prefer. It's got a lot of shoulder to it, but then it's flat at the back. I would have called that like a D shaped neck, but apparently that's what they call their U shape. It's very flat feeling on the back with just some roundedness to the edges. And as far as the scale length goes, it's 25 and a half inches. So very similar to fender scale. And once again, truss rod adjustment is down here with the wheel. The only other QC things I found on this guitar is it looks like this was stored improperly somewhere in transit. You can see that line right there. That's caused by the wood shrinking and the metal frets staying the same. That's very common on vintage instruments. Not so much brand new ones, but it's kind of hard to see. But it is present on the seventh fret. 
and the ninth fret, so that's not too bad. And as far as the next side that you don't see, you got one right there, and then all the way up here on the third to last fret right there. And this does feature a locking nut system with, once again, the chrome accents. The only thing that I would have to suggest for these guys to make it better is this is incredibly sharp right here. And I actually caught against that while just playing a little bit, and that, that feels like that needs to be rounded off or you're going to really cut your hand. So be careful with this guitar if you're playing it up in this register. But the headstock's kind of cool here. I like it. So what they have is they have the wood ending right here, and then they put like a final veneer or something over top of it that has the black layer and that's how they reveal their Schecter Diamond Series logo and then they put on top of that another little flame maple veneer to give it that purple headstock with some additional flameage up here and it just kind of matches with this whole backwards headstock the black tuners as a guy who's not normally into this type of guitar this one definitely speaks to me it's kind of visually striking the only thing I saw here there's like two bunched up spots on the H of Schecter I don't know this is like one of my only Schecter guitars that I've paid a attention to so maybe that's a signature thing of theirs or it's probably just a factory defect. As far as the back goes this body material is made out of solid mahogany. Now in Sweetwater's listing that I looked at to grab some of these specs it says it's a lightweight guitar and honestly I'm gonna have to disagree this is heavier than that other Ibanez I had. We'll definitely put this one on the scale very soon but here's what the Floyd Rose special looks like back here. It looks like it's all made of brass. You've even got brass screws into the body in there and then three black springs. Then the control cavity looks pretty nice here. I don't see any splintering issues. It's completely shielded off, including up here. But it just appears to be standard overseas style pots. Tiny little ones right here. And a pretty simple switch right there. I don't know if that number means anything to anyone. 51992-1202. I especially like the inspection date on this one, Christmas Eve 2019. And once again, I gotta say, Schechter, you definitely set this guitar up well. So as a guy that buys a lot of new guitars, yeah, that is definitely gonna leave a lasting impression on me. And the back control plate also has shielding on it. Even around the edges here, I really love the black binding, especially since it is so visually striking. I mean, you can see that clear distinction, even though this purple finish is rather dark. But we've got the large strap button right there. Then our other one is located at the bottom of the instrument. And you can kind of see it does have a little bit of a carve away right there, like a Stratocaster does, but it's not like overly apparent. That's just a nice, very subtle design feature. And speaking of nice features, Features. I mean, look at the access of this neck. That is just beautiful. And the neck itself is actually three pieces of maple, which is something I am a huge fan of. I love myself a three-piece maple neck. Even better yet is when they run the walnut stripes in between those to make it a five-piece neck. But you can see where it joins to the body right there. Uh, yeah, if you need something that you can get complete access to every single fret and beyond, this is definitely the guitar for you. That is super comfy. And another feature that I'm in love with, they even have a volute here. How nice is that? Their headstock isn't even necessarily that bent back. They just do it kind of for aesthetics as well as protection of your instrument. But back here, we can see our serial number, which dates this one to a late 2019 in December model, and it was crafted in Indonesia. And the tuners are branded Schecter. With everything installed, this thing weighs a little over eight pounds, eight pounds, 0.7 ounces. So it's not that heavy, but it's pretty heavy for a guitar that looks like this. I don't have tons of experience with these instruments, but let's go ahead, plug this one in and hear how it sounds. <laughs> Thank you. 
are my final thoughts on the Schecter Banshee GT6 now that we know pretty much everything about this thing. It's a really nice guitar. Not necessarily my style of guitar, but I think it looks really cool. It almost kind of has a Joker vibe to it. Instead of purple pickups, if they would have put green ones in here, then it would just look really cool. Maybe even do like a green headstock veneer at the top. But all that with the black hardware, with some silver appointments in some certain locations, this really is a cool looking guitar. As far as the tones go, it has that typical active pickup sound. Active pickups mean that you have to use a 9 volt battery, which I don't personally like, but some people dig the tones that you get out of these things. You kind of get a boosted clarity within the cleans, but yet it still sounds, you know, different from a passive pickup. But when I was listening back to the recordings in the distorted tones, I started to hear, you know, that metallic Metallica tone. Not that I played any Metallica on it. It's just like, oh, yep, that's definitely a reminder that they use their active pickups. And the Floyd Rose, it works. So I can't really complain too much. I don't know what I'm doing with it. So I'm sorry if there were a few out of tune segments. That's just because I, I don't really know what I'm doing. But as far as build quality and quality control on this, for the most part, I think they did pretty well. There were a few things that we noticed on the workbench, but one last thing I do want to complain about is the output jack. On a thousand dollar guitar, it's kind of scratchy. If you jiggle, it'll start cutting in and out on you. I think that's unacceptable on a thousand dollar guitar. But if you're just sitting down and playing at home like I am, it's not a big deal. But I think if you're jumping around on stage, you, you might want to do something about that. Bend the prongs a bit. But all in all, if this was a hardtail model, I would probably like it a lot better. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this Schecter Banshee. It's not what we normally see on this channel, but I'm definitely open to other brands. It's just I can't really tell you all the nitty gritty fine details of their history, but we can learn firsthand about these. Let's go ahead and check this beauty out under blacklight. This thing looks pretty cool under blacklight. You've kind of got this grayish green glowing on the finish right here. It always seems that the satin finishes do glow very early on. Even your pickups kind of have a cool glow into them. But I love the inlays under this UV light. They just come to life. That would look really cool on the stage if you could incorporate this type of lighting to your band. Face of the headstock, same stuff as the rest of the guitar here. Uh, no brakes, cracks, or repairs. I mean, it's a brand new guitar. I would hope it wouldn't have any of that stuff. But let's go ahead and check out the case. Now, please do keep in mind, these guitars do not actually come with cases. This is something you have to purchase aftermarket. These things brand new are about 150 bucks, but the case itself is actually pretty nice. I really like these latches on it. They're very smooth in function. Like a lot of the Gibson and Fender cases I have do not move as smoothly as this. Now, does that mean they're less tight? I'm not sure, <laughs> but you have a decent little handle here. It just feels like plastic and it says Schecter Guitar Research there and the same thing on the top of it there. But what I really like is the interior of this case. I was not expecting this color when I purchased it, so that was definitely a pleasant surprise when I unboxed this. But it looks like you have a lot of room here to put stuff, your tremolo bar, your strap, things like that, another compartment here, and even right there. And what a beautiful compliment to this guitar. Purple and blue, that's a cool sight. The only thing we have left to do is pack this guy up and get it on to its rightful owner. Thank you to Clint for purchasing this through my new Guitar Day program. If you're interested in doing something like this where I review your brand new guitar before you get it, you can check out my website, troglisguitarshow.com. Sometimes I can help you save some money, sometimes not. It all just depends on the value of the guitar and what guitar you're buying. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me your feedback on this new style. It's very similar to the old format of my Trade Tuesday series now that I've actually filmed one like this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.